Okay, in this first hand, there is a raise from a tag, and I decide to call. And this is usually going to be pretty typical. I have a suited connector, I have 200 big blinds effective, roughly, and I have position. These are all things that definitely get me in a good mood and definitely get me excited about getting involved. Now, before I call here, I always want to look at kind of the other people who haven't acted yet and just think real quickly about what they're likely to do. And one of the big people that I'm really focused on is the button with only that $80 stack size because I don't really want to call here if I think that he's just going to be shoving here a lot and squeezing over the top. So squeezers in general usually aren't going to be very good for making this kind of call because they're going to blow you off this. They're just kind of going to squeeze. They're, you're going to have to fold when they do it and you're essentially just throwing away $10 that you're not going to be able to even see a flop with. So what's the point? So squeezers are definitely a turn off, whereas fish and other bad players are definitely going to be a turn on. And even more so if they're in the blinds, because then we'll have absolute position going post-flop, and that's obviously going to be a good thing for us. So in this situation, the big blind is actually a fish, and that's just kind of an optimal situation for us, and thus I'm definitely going to be getting involved in calling here. So as played, the big blind calls as well. We end up flopping a two-way straight draw on a paired board. Check, bets, and I decide to call. So at this point, I'm definitely very happy about my hand. I'm also happy about my call. I don't really want to semi-bluff raise here for a couple of different reasons. One, if I call, I can get the fish involved as well and possibly bring him into the turn. I could improve and obviously I could try to hit a home run against either, possibly both of them, but at least I bring an extra source of implied odds along. Another thing is that if I raise here, am I really representing a 5 very well? Or if I had a 5, which would probably be like a 5-6 or a 5-4, would I be more likely just to call slow play and try to induce future bets from the tag? Yeah, that sounds like something I'm probably more likely to do and seems a bit more realistic. So whenever you're playing against a tag or someone who can think to any sort of extent, it's always good to kind of think about what you represent when you're taking your line and you're thinking about the line you want to take going forward and try to take a line that reps what you're trying to do. Now, I do think there will be some implied odds the times that I do improve, obviously, to my three or my six, or three or my eight, sorry. And I am thinking that there's implied odds against either opponent. I don't think the EP3 is going to have very many hands that smash this board. You know, there's one combo of pocket fives, there's three combos of pocket fours, and everything else is pretty much going to be an overpair. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable about that. And because of that, like I said, just going to call here, try to get the fish involved as well and try to hit the home run against possibly two people and with position we can definitely do some fun things on turns and rivers if the opportunity presents itself so unfortunately the fish folds four on the turn and we face a half pot bet from the tag so in this situation some people may say well maybe this is the time to semi bluff raise and just you know raise it up to 100 or whatever and try to take them off and instead of just calling but in this situation i decided to call now the reason i decided to call is actually very similar to the reason why i decided to call on the flop one i think there's still some implied odds the times i improve albeit i'm not going to get rich but i think that i can definitely make some amount of money because i don't think he's going to stack off if the river is a three or the river is an eight i don't think he's going to go crazy with that especially with roughly 200 big ones to start the hand and another thing is I can still represent a real hand if I had 5x, if I had 4x, and those are reasonable holdings that I could have. I mean, I am in position preflop. If I'm calling with 7-6 suited, I could obviously have something like 5-6 suited, possibly 4-3 suited, that sort of thing. And because of that, I like the call here, and it's only a half pot, and that's something that I'm definitely going to be looking for. So the reason why I'm looking at the half pot is twofold. One gives me a better price right here, getting 3-1. to one. The other thing is that because he bet sized it kind of small, half pot, as opposed to say something like $50, I'm thinking that that means that he's not super in love with his hand in the sense that he wants to hit a home run. And always be on the lookout for people that alter their bet sizes and whose bet sizes blatantly mean something. If 50 bucks means he wants to try to hit the home run, but a smaller bet means mm, I want to win a decent pop, but I'm definitely not looking to get my stack involved, then that's something that you definitely want to keep in mind, especially if you're setting up future streets and future bluffs. So in this situation, when I call, I am thinking that I can still wrap the hands that I'm trying to wrap, you know, the 5x or the 4x if I want to pull that kind of bluff. And obviously, I think there's still some implied odds when I improve. 
But I'm also thinking that on the river, I'm definitely going to be feeling out his bet size and making some decisions. Because remember, I'm not going to improve all that often on the river. So it's important that we kind of have those backup options, especially when we have draws like this. So on the river, we improve to a six, fills up the backdoor flush draw, and he bets 460, which is less than half pot at this point. So when he does this, you know, he raised from early position, he continuation bet in a multi-wave pot, and his bet sizes got smaller and smaller. That to me tells me that he does not want to hit a home run. He doesn't want to get a stack inside. And then some people might say, well, we're getting better than three to one. We have a pair or whatever. We're just calling. If he shows us aces, whatever. But the thing is, is that if you just call here, are you really ever going to win you know, did he really take this line with ace-king or ace-queen? Probably not. He probably took it with an overpair to the board, and because of that, calling isn't really going to be good. Our hand, yes, we have a pair, but it's not showdown value. It's really more of just a junky pair that's not going to be good. So because of that, calling just isn't really an option here because I don't think I'm going to win enough or anywhere near enough when I call. So because of that, I'm either going to fold or I'm going to come over the top. And I decided to do the come over the top thing because this is just a good situation for it in the sense of I can't call. I might as well just turn my hand into a bluff rather than make a call that I know is just not going to be profitable. So let's look into the bluff real quick. So real quick, if we look at it mathematically speaking, if you don't know how to figure out the breakeven percentage, it's very simple. It's just risk divided by risk plus reward gives you breakeven. So in this situation, 210 divided by 210 plus 201 equals 51%. So the real question is, will he fold at least 51% of the time? If yes, we should definitely be running this. If not, probably not. Very simple. Now, some people may say, well, why not just shove and try to create the most amount of pressure possible? And that's certainly an option, but if you think the shove is going to create that many extra percentages of folds, if it will, sure, could totally be worthwhile to make a shove here. But otherwise, maybe making this will get the job done nonetheless. And maybe if you just put 100 on top, that would be enough to scare them and get them to fold. It's very, very much an art form at this point. Just trying to figure out, okay, what's the exact price I need to risk here in order to get you to fold as often as I want you to fold? And really, we want him to fold a large chunk of the time. We are bluffing. And we're bluffing because if we raise and he calls, we're never ahead. He's never going to call with his high. He's a tag. You know, unless he has some very, very, very specific reads, I just don't see that happening. So in this situation, I am kind of on board with this. Obviously, I made the play and I thought it was going to work plenty enough at the time. And one quick thing, just as a quick little note. So the pot at this point is roughly 200. Now, if you ever bluff for the exact size the pot was, so if you're going to raise, I'm sorry, if you're going to raise up to 200 exactly here, then the break-even percentage is 50%. So that just kind of gives you a nice little ballpark to work with. If you're going to raise to roughly what the pot was, then you know that it's about 50% to break even. And I personally think he's going to fold enough for the time. Again, his bet sizing, toning down, definitely tells me that he does not want to create the home run pot, and thus I want to threaten a home run pot. It's also realistic that I could have improved here, that I could have had a 5 the whole time, that I could have been slow playing a 4, that I just improved a 5-6. I mean, these are all realistic possibilities, and I think he's going to hate life with the over bears, and I think he's going to be folding them a large chunk of the time. Now, if I thought that he was going to be calling the overpairs, obviously I'm not getting as many folds, and I don't like the bluff. But if I think that he's going to be folding those overpairs, then this is definitely a situation where we want to be aggressive, fight for the pot, understand when to turn a pair into a bluff, and of course, run the bluff if it's going to be profitable. Okay, in this next hand, I have kings, raised from under the gun to 10, and usually I'm just going to choose kind of a <laughs> 